Hi, and welcome back out to the channel. Thank you for coming out today. And thank you so much to all the subscribers. For everybody who subscribed, thank you so much. It so helps the channel. And for that magic few of you who have found that thank you button, that new thank you button with YouTube, hey, thank you so much for being willing to part with a couple dollars to help support the channel. Everything that you donate goes directly to keeping this channel up and available for you. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, I thought we'd talk about weight loss hacks. Have you seen those headlines? Yeah, amazing. Weight loss hack. Lose 5,000 pounds in under two hours. Yeah, those headlines, they grab my attention too. And they'd pull me in because I wanted a hack. I like the quick one or two ideas that would, you know, cut through everything and, you know, deal heavy blows to my limited ability to lose weight. And suddenly they would change my body and I would suddenly start losing weight. That was the hacks that I was looking for. But those amazing headlines. Okay, so I would consume those headlines and, you know, what if, what if you went and you said, okay, I'm going to read that or I'm going to get that and see what it is and you'd get it and it's like one step. And so I would start working that one step because, because I could, I could work that one step because it was easy. It was super easy. And that was the point of a hack, right? It's supposed to be super easy and it doesn't put me out or make me change. Sometimes these hacks, they actually would work a little bit. And, you know, a little bit is like a whole lot of hope when you're doing weight loss. And then one day they just suddenly stopped working. And... And you don't have to hit that magic 50 mark to get the suddenly stop working today. You don't have to hit that mark because you're seeing it with a lot of younger kids, you know, 17, 18, 19, early 20s. They're all running into things that didn't happen in my generation until we hit like 50. What was the biggest reason why that was different for for my generation versus the younger people today? We didn't have GMOs. I didn't grow up with GMOs. When I was growing up, GMOs were just coming in. Not many fields had them yet. You know, Monsanto was just kicking off its lawsuits. So hybrids, we had some hybrids, but there was still a ton of heritage seeds. So seeds that we hadn't done anything to, that nature made. So that's why I think that you know, these hacks, I would even use them and they would work up until, you know, I got older. But I'm seeing in in the younger generations that at younger and younger ages, it's not working. They're getting much more serious diseases like IBS, Crohn's, gallstones, kidney stones, diarrhea, constipation. They're getting these at a much younger age than my generation did. And a lot of that is because GMOs, hybrids, all these things, the chemicals that we've added into the food system, all these things impact our digestion. And since we do very little study on any of this stuff that we're squishing into our food system, their ultimate impact on the body is more of a buyer beware kind of thing. So when they stop working, what happens when you when you're reading these hacks and they're none of them are working? What's your next step, right? You're like, Ugh, I guess I'm going to have to do something. I guess I'm actually going to have to participate, but I don't want to participate that much. This is too complicated. I need somebody to tell me what to do. So I am going to try a weight loss plan. And of course, I graduated to that next step and I picked out a weight loss plan for me. So I tried these diet programs. And you know what was really neat about the diet programs? If you've ever tried them, you're going to say, yeah, I know. 
But the programs, they did the meal planning for me. So I, and I could actually buy a pre-processed meal. So I wouldn't even have to cook anything. I could just open up a package and eat. So perfectly prepared pre-processed meal. And there's a lot of programs out there that do that, right? There's Jenny Craig, there's Weight Watchers, and they all do it for you. You just have to follow a few steps. Easy, still easy. And so I was willing to try one of these plans. I didn't try one of those two. I tried a different one, same thing. Buy your pre-processed meals here and you're gonna lose weight. And these programs, they got me moving forward. So I actually did start losing weight. And that got me motivated. But these pre-processed programs also got me hungry. And I started getting cravings. Do you know the cravings? Have you felt the cravings? Yeah. So I felt like I was starving. I felt like I was punishing myself. And I would go out to eat with friends. My husband and I would. And we, we would do these plans together. So, you know, there wouldn't be just one of us suffering in silence. But we'd do them together. And we'd go out to eat with friends. And everybody else is ordering all the good stuff on the menu. And I get to eat a hamburger without a bun, without mayo or ketchup. And I could top it off with a glass of water. <laughs> it was depressing. So then what happens, right? If you've been in that situation, what happens? You start getting angry at food. I was resentful that I had to do this. And one day, the cravings won out. And I inhaled a pizza, a Coke, and a milkshake. And wow, that was great. So it took me a long time to figure it out to figure out why diets were so painful and why they didn't work. And today, you know, there's a whole lot of anti-diet uh, stuff out there that shows that the diets really don't work. Well, why the, the bottom line of why they didn't work is because diets, these diet programs that gave you these pre-processed meals that were all 100 calories, you know, it's like 10 pounds of food and 100 calories. Why they didn't work is because they were that next level hack. And again, what's a hack? Well, a hack is this quick hitter to force a rapid change without having to make any real changes, real internal changes for yourself. And I wanted to change. I just didn't want to have to change. So, there I was grabbing at straws with all these one size fits all templates because every diet program, what is it? A one size fits all template. And what happens with these one size fits all templates is they treat me like a commodity. They treat you like a commodity. Everybody can go through this one path. It was like we were all these Henry Ford Model T's and every one of us was supposed to be exactly the same commodity or the, the exact same thing down to the color. So my individual nutrition needs, they were not important in these diet templates and the templates didn't even consider how my body used foods. So that last one's probably the most important, not considering how or what foods created or reversed disease in my body. And we're not all addressing the same disease, right? Sit down with your friends. Some of you have similar diseases, but you're all pretty unique. You like bringing in your own personal twist to pathology in the body. So mine was high blood pressure, intermittent high blood pressure, um, gallstones, for one of my clients, it was cystitis. Another one, it was Crohn's. Another one of my clients, it was migraines. I mean, we all came to the table with different things going on. What did that mean? So there's a lot of reasons why 
you start on the diet pathway. And one of the reasons is Western medicine has advertised weight loss as the answer to everything. Lose a couple pounds and you'll get rid of your high blood pressure, your diabetes, and feel great. Well, I found that a couple pounds had absolutely zero impact on my health issues. And my clients found out that weight loss had zero positive impact on their health issues. Hmm. Okay, so why doesn't weight loss correct all your health issues? I mean, that's what my doctor said. I remember even one of my naturopaths saying, yeah, I was telling them I have this intermittent high blood pressure. It's really weird. I don't understand it. Oh, lose a couple pounds, it'll go away. Yeah, that so didn't happen. So here's my thoughts. If you try something and it doesn't work, there's a reason for that. And if you try it a few times, and many of us have tried that diet thing quite a few times, and it didn't change your key health issues, then weight's probably not the cause of your health issue. It's probably just another one of the symptoms. Hmm. Well, here's something that's interesting. A lot of those purchased meal plans, they can actually make your health worse. And I had to find this out by accident. I felt so lucky. And it wasn't easy to figure out because meal plans, they're created with all the correct nutrients and they're perfectly blended to address all your health needs. At least that's how they're marketed and advertised to me. And my doctor believed that too. Well, it was later that I found out that healthy eating isn't about nutrients. Healthy eating is about healthy foods and it's about whole foods. You just can't separate, separate the nutrients from the food and get everything the body needs. Oh, that reminds me. So one of my clients, horrible stomach pain. They were having horrible stomach pain and they wanted to do this abdominal surgery to correct it. In fact, their doctors were telling them that's the only thing that's going to correct this. Nothing's going to correct this. Well, in order to get to that surgery, they had to lose a lot of weight. And they were willing to do that. They were sent to the nutritionist for the hospital who immediately prescribed this really expensive canned shake for them that was engineered to be the optimum level of all the critical nutrients that you need. Okay. So did anything in what I just said surprise you? Because it surprised me that food, that these shakes were prescription. I was like, really? How in the world was a pharmaceutical company able to bioengineer prescription weight loss shakes? Okay, well, the client started drinking these shakes and losing weight. They were doing a great job at losing weight on these shakes. I, I imagine because there's a little can that said 100 calories. But they also started getting this horrible heartburn almost instantaneously, like within days of starting these shakes. And it was really hard to deny the cause because that was the only thing they were eating. Probably... There was this thought in the back of my client's head that if they could just make it through these shakes and the weight and they could get to the surgery and then everything would be okay. And I think that's what we think a lot. Oh, if we can just make it through this diet, we'll get to our goal weight and everything's going to be okay. Life doesn't work like that. Somehow, these pharmaceutically engineered perfect nutrition shakes caused pancreatitis. So that was the next step that I had to acknowledge. Diets, engineered foods, they make you sicker. 
the body is really complicated and it needs so many different things. It needs more than you can find in a multivitamin or a perfectly engineered shake. It requires all those weird ingredients that I can't pronounce and I didn't even know existed. Things like oleoresin or cassian or things with four or five syllables that I didn't know were real food. What I didn't know is that without all those weird ingredients, the body doesn't have all the necessary resources to build all the unique proteins that the body needs. And without the right ingredients, the body doesn't substitute to make a cheaper product. I mean, your body's not corporate America. It doesn't suddenly make smaller rolls of toilet paper and say it's the same thing. Here's the thing, if I was younger, my body would have had a store of these unique ingredients that could help cover me while I was starving myself of them through dieting. But I wasn't younger. I was older. My body didn't have a store of all those particular ingredients. It's not just happening in my generation. So I realize it's happening in much younger, 20s, 30s, 40 year olds, that it's happening here also because of all the engineered food that we're eating. A lot of us don't have this wild store of all these ingredients that we need to repair our body. I needed to come to grips with my new reality. I had to acknowledge that my body could no longer suffer these insults. And it was up to me. I can tell you, it wasn't an immediate acceptance of my new state of reality. I realized I had a new reality, but I just wasn't really willing to address the food thing. And part of the reason I wasn't willing to address the food was the black and white approach to food that we have here in the West. It's like this. It's like either I'm a vegan or I'm not a vegan. Either I'm eating carbs or I'm not eating carbs. I mean, there's this these huge labels that we have to grab onto to define ourselves with food. It's really annoying. I remember I was in college. I was studying existentialism. And I remember talking to my philosophy professor on it. And I was talking about some of the basis of existentialism. And I said, I really like this theory, but I also like this and this and this. And he goes, well, you know, that's not part of existentialism. So you can't, and basically he was telling me, so you, you can't be an existentialist if you are these other two, three things. And I thought he was just crazy. The world's not that black and white. So if you're going to limit yourself with those kind of black and white solutions, you're not going to get a lot of successes. And that's kind of what was stopping me when I was looking at how the West was looking at foods. I needed an intelligent approach to eating and I needed to understand the food in a way that I could select foods that were good for me without wiping out whole groups of foods and without eating manufactured meals or bioengineered food solutions from the pharmaceutical company. Because when they do that, you miss way too many ingredients that you actually really need. And I needed this solution to heal my health issues without micro-focusing on weight management because weight management is the leading reason to become unhealthy eaters and unhealthy overall here in the West, right? So in the end, I needed to understand foods in a way where I could naturally pick foods that were healthy for me based on what was happening in my body. So if I had been running hot and sweating a lot, what could I eat to help cool off my body? What could I eat to help warm up my body? You know, your, your grandparents are always running around cold. What could you feed them to help warm up their body? What about foods 
that I could choose to change my high blood pressure? How about foods to help reduce stress? What about eliminating fatigue? Oh, that, that would be a winner. No, not tired anymore. I'll sign up for that one. So I needed to be able to do this because nothing else was working for me. And I was getting sicker. So I hit that point where I had to make a choice. Either I could choose the path of Western pharmaceuticals and surgery, or I could change. That's a hard decision. Almost nobody likes making that decision. The one thing I realized is that I'm in a different position than most of you because, oh, guess what? My career is focused on natural health. But here's the thing, even with that focus in natural health, I didn't get to avoid the same health difficulties that most of you are going to be able to deal with at some point in time in your life. So even though I'm doing this health thing, I was still doing a lot of things that were harming my health. But my focus on natural health gave me a reference point on healing my body. I knew I could do it. And I saw it in my grandparents' generation. They talked about food differently than we do today. I have a couple clients who are a little bit older than my parents' generation. It's kind of cool. I mean, they're the last of the the people who grew up with farming where they were still using horses. Can you imagine? That's so amazing to me. Well, one of these clients stated that, you know, when he's feeling fatigued, he said his favorite food was liver and onions to help with fatigue. Wow, he's so right. Liver has more iron than most foods and can help with that anemia that comes with fatigue. So after childbirth, liver would be great for the mother. I can just see all you mothers out there going, oh, are you kidding? Can you pick something else? But it would be if you could be open and if you could find grass-fed cows. So I had to start remembering that knowledge of foods. I needed to see foods as my ally in life, not my enemy. That's where Chinese nutritional therapy came to me because the focus in Chinese nutritional therapy was still on the healing properties of foods. And through that, I understood what foods could help me and what foods were probably making my symptoms worse. So a couple things. There's this progression to getting well. You don't just make a decision to get well and it happens, at least not for most of us. You decide to get well and you go through a few different stages of getting well. You start with the hacks, When you're younger, sometimes these hacks even work because you have so many resources in your body to cover you while you're starving it of what it needs. Yet, as you get older, hacks stop helping and they actually start harming you. So then you take the next step and you might decide to do a diet plan. You're willing to take that next step where you're not doing anything. Somebody's telling you everything to do. And you just follow that. And the first diet, it's going to work. And you're going to be satisfied with results. And as soon as you hit your target goal, you're starving because you've been starving yourself of all these nutrients that your body actually needs. So you hit your target weight goal and you're off and running looking for all those nutrients you've been missing. (sighs) <sighs> and after returning to your old ways, guess what? You get to go gain all your weight back, plus a little bit more. But after that, you're willing to pick up diets to resolve your health concerns because it was successful. It's like those food hacks. They were successful until they weren't. Well, the research on the dieting culture, it's just starting to be published. Most of us don't run into this research because we're not looking for it. It's not something that 
is brought up with your doctor because the diet industry is really big money, big, big money. So that means even though you do your diet and you realize you gained all your weight back plus a few more pounds and you have more health issues, you know what's weird is we don't consciously acknowledge that dieting was the source of the problem. If you're lucky enough to find this information, then you're able to face what has happened to your health in a constructive way instead of blaming yourself. Because that's what we do, right? We gain all the way ba- weight back, plus a few more pounds, we're sicker, and we say it's our fault. Everybody else can do this diet, why can't I? So the dieting organizations that you join, they can be really destructive to your self-esteem. How are they destructive? Well, they point to everyone who is crushing their diet strategy, but not you. It sets you up to blame yourself and stop believing you can find a new healthy way to regain your life. So you've gone through the hacks. You've gone through those quick hitters. You've gone through the diet hacks and they're not working. And you're thinking you have to change something else. And the next logical progression has been to move towards clean eating, which for me is eating whole unprocessed foods that are as close to nature or as close to their natural state as possible most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. And that was my next step in finding my own health and recovering my health. After I went there, I found that there's one more step that you can take and one more step that's really important for those of us who actually do experience disease as it's defined in Western medicine. You know, how do you repair your health without having to resort to Western surgery, Western pharmaceuticals? The next level of clean eating is learning about the different properties of foods and how that impacts your body so that you can identify those foods that are going to repair your health and those foods that might harm your health and focus on directing your clean eating towards those foods that repair your health. In the clean eating section, you're going to find a lot of information that you can use to help improve or correct things that are going on in your body. Let's say your lungs feel congested. Well, you're going to learn what foods you can eat to help clear up your lungs or maybe you have high blood pressure what can you do what can you eat to help improve your high blood pressure and if you're ready to take it to the next level you can actually train with me to figure out how to do this for your specific body chemistry and your body health and how to do it for not just you but for members of your family and for those that you love. Okay, guys, there is some thoughts on weight loss hacks and why they work for a while, but why they don't work forever. Until next time, I'll catch you on the other side.